This is Jim Gehring from Brown Tool Auctions. We're very excited about our next auction to be held in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania on October 28th and 29th. In this short video, we'd like to share with you just a few of the nearly 800 lots that will be offered at that auction. Francis Nicholson of Rentham, Massachusetts made planes between 1728 and 1753 and is America's first known professional plane maker. Here are three examples of his work. Before the industrial era of the 1800s, plane makers were skilled artisans and would often decorate their work with elaborate carvings. In 1827, Hazard Knowles, a prolific inventor from Colchester, Connecticut, patented the first American plane to use a cast iron rather than wooden body. The plow plane, so called because it cuts a groove in the wood that resembles the furrow cut into the ground by an agricultural plow, was one of the most valuable tools in a cabinet maker's toolbox during the 19th century. In order to work properly, the fence of the plane has to be exactly parallel to the cutter, and a number of different methods were experimented with in order to quickly adjust the fence and keep it exactly parallel. One of the most popular designs was the so-called three-armed plow or center wheel plow in which a third arm in the middle of the fence simultaneously sets the depth and keeps the fence exactly parallel. The earliest design for a center wheel plow was patented in 1834 by Israel White of Philadelphia, one of our earliest plane makers. Uh, examples of his three-arm plow are extremely rare. We know of six examples that are marked as having been made by him rather than by one of his apprentices, and this is one of those six. It is in absolutely perfect condition. Another very early maker of three-arm plow planes was the New Jersey partnership of Mockridge and Francis. This rosewood-bodied plow is one of only two known to exist. The panther head saws produced by the Cincinnati Company of Woodrow and McFarland in the 1870s at the height of the arts and crafts movement are a perfect example of decoration for its own sake, even in an object as utilitarian as a handsaw. In the second half of the 19th century, there was an explosion of patented planes, including some that were amazingly complex including the Amos Fales patent that came with a wide variety of attachments to cut different designs, the Carol Thomas patent that combined a bevel and marking gauge in the same body with a plane, the Aiken Brothers patent for a slat cutting plane, of which this is the only known example, the Cyrus Hardy and William Steers patents, which use different methods to reduce friction between the plane and the board being plane. And finally, this last example by an unknown inventor that featured a rotating holder for the blade to set it at different angles. Pedal-driven tools were the precursors to today's power tools and often featured very elaborate cast iron bodies. Here are two examples of the jigsaws manufactured by the Trump Brothers Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Infill planes with brass or iron bodies filled with exotic wood such as ebony and rosewood were the highest quality planes produced in Great Britain beginning in the middle of the 19th century and are highly prized today both by collectors and modern woodworkers. A similar design was used by William Marples of Sheffield, England for his ultimatum style of braces. The adjustable bevels, patented by Isaiah Robinson and manufactured by the St. Johnsbury, Vermont Tool Company, are among the finest layout tools ever made. This double-bladed model that can be locked to form a tri-square is among the rarest variations of the tool. This octant 
manufactured by Edmund and George Blunt of New York City in the early 19th century, was used by navigators at sea to measure the height of stars above the horizon. Amazingly, it still has its original pencil used by the navigator to take notes of sightings. If you need a place to store everything you get at the auction, this workbench manufactured by the Hummacher Schlemmer Company of New York is in near pristine condition. We hope that you've enjoyed this sampling of the nearly 800 lots of fine tools and other artifacts that will be contained in the auction on October 29th. Photos and descriptions of all of the lots will be on our website at www.finetoolj.com at the end of September. You can also order a full color catalog through the website or by calling 1-800-248-8114. We hope to see you at Camp Hill, and don't forget to come out a day early for the dealer show that takes place on Friday, October 28th. However, if you can't make it in person, absentee bidding and a full money-back guarantee is available through our website. On behalf of everyone at Brown Tool Auctions, thanks for watching.